So today we're going to be talking about selfishness. I'm of the belief that everything that we do is out of selfishness. While we may not know the reasons, the exact reasons that drive us to do something, everything comes back to how it benefits us. We're nice to other people so that they're nice to us in return. We provide for our family so that we may have relationships with those around us. We have children so that we can be needed, so that we can be responsible, so that we have someone who can love us. Our selfishness most clearly comes across whenever we're acting in accordance with our basic needs. Try as we may, our lives are very physical. We project ourselves into the digital realm throughout the day and interact more with our devices than we do with people, but our bodies are still very real. We have to put food into our mouths, clean our teeth, we have to take in liquids and expel them not long after. These are very first needs and our very last. We feel them before we fully come into the world, and we feel them as we exit the world. We rely on air for every moment, and if we were restricted of it, we would do everything in our power to reach for that air. These are our everyday needs. Without them, we will literally die. In 21st century America, we don't really have to worry about these needs. We'll have food on the table and plenty of air to breathe. We have access to clean water and choose soda regardless. Back in the day, our pre-human ancestors fought each other over these basic needs. That fight is what propelled the human race into existence. Their selfishness is what created us. In America today, we spend much of our time relaxing. We don't have to fight for these needs anymore. We go home and watch YouTube or Netflix, and anyone who has any taste watches HBO. It's a purge of all the stress we carried throughout the day. Relaxation is often as real, if not more so real, than our biological urges. Because relaxation is the thing that we struggle to fulfill. Our biological urges are satisfied. And so we think that we need this relaxation time. We feel that we do. And it's a selfish thing. It really is to put everything else aside. But we do it anyways. While obligations aren't traditionally regarded as self-imposed, that's, that's what they are. We don't have to have this time. We don't have to catch up on Game of Thrones. Even if we do think our friends will disown us if we don't. Anything that we say is an obligation is really just an excuse for our actions. And these actions may feel very necessary. I'm not saying that if we don't eat, we can survive, because that's, that's not the case at all. But they are choices. Being a human is all about these choices. Because we're self-aware. Every single thing we do is a choice. I used to have some very slight OCD. It wouldn't have been diagnosed because it was just a part of growing up, but um, I would clack my teeth back and forth an even number of times because I felt like I had to. And it literally took me years to get out of this because I had it ingrained in my mind that I needed to do this for some kind of sense of completion. Honestly, to this day, I find myself resisting that urge to do that for whatever reason. There was some weird sense of closure about it, as if everything was at peace because I was doing it. And that same peace is in this relaxation that I was talking about. We feel like we have to do it, but really it's, it's just a construct. There are things that we do need as physical humans, but that's not one of them. We do it because we're selfish. We even do those physical things because we're selfish. What is it that we're trying to accomplish whenever we do these things? Why do we do the things that we do? Well, it's because there's something that drives us. It isn't something that we can really pin down and define because it's kind of abstract, but it does exist. There's something within us that is behind each and every one of our actions. I, I don't really like the question, why do you like X? Because I think it ignores the possibility that there aren't really reasons behind that. There may be reasons behind you liking some of the things that you like, but most of them just come down to personal preference. And that's that. We just like whatever the thing is. 
but we don't always have a reason. Whatever this thing is, it's a sub-goal of our volition. It's one of the things that satisfies our selfishness. One of the things that I like is pistachio almond ice cream. And it's not because my wife doesn't like it, and so I get to eat the whole tub. Although that might play a role subconsciously, it's, it's not the reason. I don't have reasons for liking it. I just like it. I also like logic. I'm not completely sure why, and I can't really reason myself to an answer even though I feel like I should be able to, but I still like it. I can tell you what about it is satisfying, but again, that doesn't really answer the why question. That why asks for the cause of an effect. I guess you might say I like pistachio almond ice cream because my parents made me try new things as a kid, and that ice cream was one of those things that clicked with the state of my brain, my DNA, my upbringing. This flavor may have also been cemented by my, uh, by my incessant desire to be my own unique person and not a vanilla guy. I'm not at all saying we never have reasons for liking things, but quite often our desire for something is less than reasonable. We didn't think out reasons before coming to the decision that we liked that thing. Selfishness isn't something we can easily identify for multiple reasons. First, it's super complicated. You look at me and say, this guy likes pistachio almond ice cream. And sure, that's true. But if you think that because I like that ice cream and because I'm selfish, I will always have that with me, that's not the case. I'm super selfish, but part of my selfishness outweighs that ice cream. It's not my reason for life. I love to do other things. I love writing, and I do that quite often. I also don't like to spend money, even if it is on myself. And so because of this, that ice cream isn't my goal. I guess you could say I, I love it, but it's not everything. It's not very much, honestly. My wife and my brothers and my parents and my best friends add up to almost everything else. I have them my book, my hobbies, my job, etc. And they are what I devote my life to. And you might say, okay, well, if that's what you devote your life to, then you're not really a selfish guy after all. You love your family. You do what you can for them. Your friends, your work. But again, these things, these things are complicated. I may do what I'm supposed to. I may respect the people around me, I may help them, I may be kind to them, I may devote my time to them, and I may do all of this because I truly love them, but it reflects back. Everything that I do for everyone else benefits me in some way. And maybe it's not a conscious decision for me to do things because I know they will benefit me, but something is ingrained to do these things because they benefit me. It's kind of like survival of the fittest, but for your mind. The things that benefit you are going to become the things that you do. This is why people get hooked on drugs. Because those things benefit them in the moment, and then they just have to keep going back because it works for them. That's why I had to clack my teeth. It worked for me. It did something for me. Something that I couldn't really point to. But it worked. Same thing when I'm with my family or with my friends, whenever I'm devoting time to them. On the surface, I'm, I may see it as I do care for them, but deep down there's something more. Deep down it's more like I help them because it makes me maybe value myself or maybe they'll be more likely to help me. And again, these aren't, these aren't conscious reasons, but they all are under the surface. That's, that's how life works. That's how society works. There's always a give and take. You might give, but if, if you give, then someone else is taking. And then they, they owe you. You'll get back. With interest. <laughs> no matter how you look at it, everything that I do is based on an I like dot 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 statement. Everything. You might say, I love my family. And there aren't reasons for that. You just do. But again, that's not about them. You don't love them 
for their sake. You love them for your sake. You love them. You might say this is semantics and that this is just a function of the English language and the way we structure our sentences, but I don't think that's the case. Because what's the purpose of those sentences? No matter how you look at them, they boil down to an inward devotion. I like helping my friends with their YouTube channels. I like creating D&D quests for my friends. I like to buy my wife gifts every so often. Now these things can point towards the other person initially. I may know that my wife likes gifts, but something subconscious is driving me to do it. It's not directly because of her desires, it's because of mine. I desire to further our relationship with any of these people. We don't love our loved ones for their sake. We love them because of the way that it makes us feel. And I don't think it has to be taboo either. We can recognize we're selfish. I heard about this guy, I don't remember when, but uh, he was suing his parents for creating him. It's kind of true. When you talk to couples about having kids, they often talk about kids in regards to their other plans. They talk about when they want kids. They want kids when they feel it will be convenient, or when they feel like they have a biological need, or when they feel like they need someone to love. But again, those point back to them. Someone to love is also someone to love you. I want. I like. I'm not a parent yet, so I don't I don't understand the sacrifices of being one, but I was a kid and I have friends who are parents. And while they are constantly busy, sick, or just plain exhausted, they wouldn't trade it for the world. From what I gather, it's tough, but worth every minute of it. And people may say that the only selfish thing about being a parent is making someone you can expect to look after you in your later years. But I don't think that's entirely true. We make children for ourselves. We take care of them for ourselves. Whether it's some kind of need to be responsible or need to be honorable, respectable, it all comes back to us. It's not, in the end, about them. It's about what's driving us. I don't think it's truly possible for us to ever act completely out of selfless will. Because volition comes from within, it doesn't come from without. Whenever I have this uh, conversation with friends, what some people point to is sacrificing your own life for someone else's. They say that that is one of the very few ways in which you are actually selfless because it doesn't benefit you at all. And I think that's kind of naive because sacrifice is honorable. Sacrifice is respected. You laying down your life for someone is considered brave. How then is it that we think that things that we can do are selfless, ever? How is it that we can say that we do something and it doesn't benefit us at all? How is it that we can say that on no level are we motivated by the benefit that an action brings us? So it's most clear that we're selfish whenever it comes to our needs, whenever it comes to our physical needs especially, because without those without food and without water, we will do anything for those things. If we take a look at Maslow's hierarchy of needs, we'll see that the physiological needs come first. These are the base needs. These come before anything else. When these are satisfied, we look to the next needs, the safety needs. Personal security, employment, resources, health, property. These are the next important things. If our physiological needs are satisfied, we look to the safety needs. And if our safety needs aren't satisfied, we will do anything to get them. Next is love, friendship, relationships, and then respect, self-esteem, status, recognition, strength, etc. And then self-actualization. I'm not saying that Maslow had it completely figured out, but I think his hierarchy shows that while certain actions may seem on the surface to be selfless, they are grounded in what it does for ourselves. We desire to be respected. We desire to be free. We desire friendship, intimacy, family, security. We need a job. We need something that makes us feel meaningful. 
useful, and we need our basic needs. Everything comes from this. There's nothing that you can do that isn't selfish. And again, this doesn't need to be taboo. There's nothing wrong with this. This is just the state of things. And I think it's time that we recognize this. Well, that's my little rambling for today. <laughs> if y'all want to comment below what you think, if you think I'm wrong, if you have any arguments against me, comment below. I may respond in a later video. Give me some ideas for future videos. See you in the next one.